And good morning, I'm Brian Moore. And before we get to our top 11 stories at 11, we just got word 29 year old Stephen Vouch of Boise is recovering following a black bear attack. It happened while camping along the middle fork of the Salmon River in the Frank Church of No Return Wilderness. He was treated and released from St. Luke's for cuts to his head. We will have much more on this story coming up today on KBOI 2 News at 4. Now let's get back to our top 11 stories at 11. Last night, Boise Airport officials held an open meeting with the public about the possibility of the Idaho Guard bringing fighter jets to Gowan Field. While the jets have a reputation of being noisy, it was the neighbors making noise last night. What they were saying and what their concerns are in just a few minutes. And federal officials have approved a Canadian company's request to conduct exploratory drilling about 55 miles northeast of Boise in the Boise National Forest. The company is looking for molybdenum, copper and silver. The company wants to start drilling this fall within a 3,000 acre area. The company believes there is $100 billion worth of elements buried there. And the battle against major flood waters in South Carolina is ongoing. A top Army National Guard official says he's hopeful the worst has been avoided at a compromised dam in the Columbia area. Crews from the Guard and the Electric and Gas Company worked through the night and into the morning dropping sandbags and rocks to bolster the failing dam. Residents of a nearby neighborhood had been urged to evacuate, but some are now being allowed to return. A new YMCA and other amenities could be coming to Eagle. Sounds good, but not everyone is convinced the reasons why some people and some city leaders are proceeding with caution. A 77 year old Wyoming woman has died after being bitten by a rabid bat. It happened in Lander. That's about halfway between Casper and the Idaho border. The Daily Ranger reports she was bitten in August and recently transferred her to a Salt Lake City hospital but still passed away. Two relatives and a hospital worker were vaccinated as a precaution. And a judge is reviewing bully breed laws in two Idaho cities. According to laws in Payette and Fruitland, a dog can be uh, considered dangerous and removed from city limits based on its breed. The laws require certain pet owners to carry a $1 million insurance policy and pay licensing fees. There's really no due process that's provided by the cities, meaning that if your dog is accused of being a pit bull or a dangerous dog based on breed, um, the burden is on you to prove your innocence. And under current law, city leaders can take a bully breed from its owners. A Caldwell man has been found guilty of voluntary manslaughter in a Christmas Eve stabbing last year. Our partners at the Idaho Press Tribune reporting 19 year old Jacob Hernandez was found not guilty of second degree murder, but is guilty of voluntary manslaughter along with some other charges. Police say 20 year old Ricardo Sedano died when several people fought outside a Caldwell apartment complex. Hernandez's sentencing is coming up in November. And five Boise schools were on lockdown yesterday after reports of a wanted man in the area carrying a firearm. Boise police now asking for your help in locating him. His name is Gerald Lightfoot. He's wanted on a via, uh, probation violation. Police say he may also have information on several recent burglaries. Officers not able to find him yet. That's after a tip that he was in the area of Albion Street in South Roosevelt. Anyone with information should call Crime Stoppers. And a Caldwell woman who prosecutors say was involved in a hit and run made her first court appearance yesterday. Prosecutors say Maria Gonzalez was driving on Happy Valley Road in Nampa when she hit a cyclist and then she allegedly took off. Gonzalez is charged with felony leaving the scene of an accident. The woman on the bicycle remains in the hospital in serious condition. She is expected to make a full recovery. Gonzalez is currently being held in the Canyon County Jail. Her next court appearance is October 15th. And Boise police are looking for witnesses in another hit and run crash involving a bicyclist. This one happening yesterday near the intersection of South Americana Boulevard and Shoreline Drive. The car failed to stop after hitting the cyclist from behind. The person on the bike was taken to the hospital with non life threatening injuries. And the Boise State Broncos looking to keep their winning streak alive and it could all come down to turnovers. The first two games uh, they lost the turnover battle. During their three game winning streak, the defense has stepped up. They've taken the ball away 10 times and the Broncos offense hasn't given it away even once. I think they understand that's the key and 
You know, that's something that I feel like this team is taking a lot of pride in right now. Every team's different. That's not always the case. You know, they don't always, sometimes it's big play, sometimes it's uh, third down stops. You know, for this group, where we are right now, turnovers. They're taking a lot of pride in it. And, you know, if that can continue, then we put ourselves in a great position to win. And you can catch the Broncos take on Colorado State Saturday at 5 p.m. Mountain Time on CBS Sports Network.